Few air mixtures can provide some great stimulus for balancing equations. So this month we're going to be having some fun exploding some food cans and some eggs. We've exploded some food cans on exhibition chemistry in the past, but today we're going to be revisiting an absolute classic demonstration that should be in the repertoire of any chemistry teacher worth their salt. It's the, often known as the exploding coffee can, but today we're going to be using a Pringles can. Any cardboard based food can will suffice. You're looking for something with a plastic lid on it like this. Um, uh, this is what I'm going to be using today. What you're going to want to do is pour yourself a hole in the metal end up here and another hole down here um, on the other side near the lid and I have mine on the side some people have those on the bottom um, but having it on the side means that you can just leave this straight down on the table you don't need any kind of supporting structure for it you're going to flush the can with some fuel now methane or hydrogen will suffice uh, you should not, however, try to use propane or butane mixtures because the higher density is going to stop this demo dead in its tracks. If you have it, methane is probably the better option. You get a nice yellow flame of that, off that to start the demonstration off with. Hydrogen burns a little bit cleaner, so it's not quite as good, but hydrogen is all I have available, so that's what we're going to be using today. Use a fume cupboard and flush the can for at least a minute to remove all the air. You may want to apply a little bit of tape over the top of the hole so you don't have to use your finger to prevent the gas escaping. Make sure you're working away from your fuel. Use a pair of safety screens to protect both you and the audience and then you can light the top with a lit splint or ruler and then wait. You'll get a nice yellow flame which shrinks and gets bluer as more air is drawn in via the lower hole. Methane takes a little bit longer as the range of mixtures in which it will explode are narrower than hydrogen. As you can see though, the flame from hydrogen isn't quite as good. While the flame shrinks, you can discuss the changes in colour and link back to the chemical equation. Whatever you do, don't return to the can once lit. You may need to wait a while, and many students might expect the demonstration to already be over. Little do they know, the best bit is still to come. If you're feeling a little bit cheeky, you can do this demonstration with an egg as well. It's worth looking out for the lion mark or similar markings on the egg which indicate that it should be coming from uh, stocks that have a low risk of carrying salmonella. But all the same, Cleeps does recommend that you use ethanol uh, to clean the egg and to protect yourself by blowing through it with a straw. You're going to tap a small hole in each end and use an unfilled paper clip to break up the yolk. Then use a straw to blow the contents out before rinsing with ethanol once more. I tend to leave my eggs to dry for a little bit afterwards. Repeat the filling process as before. I'm using a cup pipette to help me load the egg. Once in front of the class, I tend to get a few seconds before the egg backfires, but when running around after cameras and lights, I found it tends to be a little bit more keen to go. If you do try these demonstrations, please do let us know in the comments below. We'd love to know what teachers have made of them. Thanks for listening, and I'll see you again in September. <laughs>